Midtown Manhattan for a much anticipated main event. Ten rounds of heavyweight action. Boy, and we expect this to be a big night of action. We spoke with both fighters yesterday. Fireworks in. Little get to know you here in the opening round, scheduled for 10. Overhand right can be so effective. He's showing what a skilled fighter he is with the counter punch. Well, the old times used to say when you calm in there with you and control in there, you can make him do what you want. He made him tie his shoelaces right there. Big, big shot to the head. He left a hole, it was closed. Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. George Foreman is the personification of a power punch. He is power punching. His opponent says, I can match power with power. But he can't match power on both sides of the plate the way Foreman can. He can get you out with the right hand and the left hand. Tucks those elbows in, blocks the body shot. Foreman with a big uppercut. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. be accurate to send the combination to the body and he does that you can see he's trying to score up top but off the mark there iron mike with an iron right tyson's showing you what it takes to be the best in this business good crisp combo he missed with that headshot. Red hot action to open up this fight. Both men throwing, both men landing. It's been a long time since I've seen something like this. I think it was in a film library. Watchman and Hammer and Hank, the great Henry Armstrong, never took a step backwards, kept going forward. Coming to the end of this round. Joe and Teddy with you ringside. Teddy, a round like that where it's a lot of busy activity and both guys being busy. When you were a trainer, are those the kind of rounds that you prefer or do you like the pace to be a little slower? Does it depend on each guy? No, if I have a fight, I'd rather have a guy fighting a guy that you never see him. <laughs> Leave me the heck alone. And where I'm in control all the time. But the fans love to see a fight like that. George Foreman's opponent knows exactly what the game plan can be now. That counter punch landed with some success. What an excellent two punch combo by George Foreman. Unable to score with the hook. Reaching the halfway mark of this round. Right hand over the top, very accurate with it. So right from the start in this fight, he's committed to the body shots. Well, that's the time to go there, right at the beginning, because body work pays off for you later in the fight. No sense in wasting time. Get right to it. Mike Tyson's putting his punches together now. That's a nice combination. Mike Tyson, the youngest heavyweight champion ever, claiming all three belts, unifying the title, and then, of course, making a ragdoll out of Michael Spinks. How important is that to his legacy? Everything. I mean, he came up with the man, his mentor, Customato, who had the prior youngest heavyweight champ of all time. That was Floyd Patterson. He wanted to break that record. He planned on, he lived to break that record. A crushing two-punch combo by George Foreman. Foreman's last round to me, Teddy, completely ineffective. His accuracy way off the mark, throwing punches, but lost the round. Joe, talking about being off the mark, if you're traveling outside and you're lost, you need a map to find your way. He needs a map right now to find his way. He needs some direction. And round number three is underway.
Very nice defensive guard there. deal with a cut on his cheek right now. The good news is it's below the eye, but still, it could get nasty as the fight progresses. And coming upon the halfway mark of this three-minute round. Good combination to the head. Good scoring shot. It was a straight right. Tyson's showing you a little defensive skill there. Able to move away from that punch. This is really solid defense by Mike Tyson. You see how he has his arms up in that peekaboo position, but by doing so, he's not allowing any of his opponent's punches to get in. Tyson's landing a combination here. That's what he does when he's at his very best. That is a classic Tyson uppercut. Last 10 seconds of round number three. Tyson's coming up with the answers, avoiding that punch. And the bell rings, signifying the end of the round. Teddy's got this fight three to zip. That's easy to see. Tyson's been the more active guy. If you throw more punches, you're going to earn the judges' respect. As long as the other guy's not landing the cleanest shots, even though he's not as active. But this is the kind of fight where... He's just busier, he's doing more, and that's carrying the rounds. He has his target, he lands a straight right. Foreman's finding out right now that this counter-punching style is not getting the results he needs in these middle rounds. What is the answer? Well, when a guy's not coming in and walking in, you can't counter-punch. I mean, he's not, he's not giving you the kind of turf that you need. Now you have to find a way to create your offense, to lead a little bit. That starts with the jab, getting off first. Little head hunting with the left. Ninety seconds to go in round number four. And now he scores well with a straight right. that combination by George Foreman. So he digs in with a left hand to the body and then places the right. He got all into that one. That was a solid uppercut. He scored well after being hit himself. Tyson showing us a great display of one of the best elements of defense, Teddy, and that is your ability to make your man miss by moving your head. And now what his opponent has to do is he has to understand, hopefully he's been taught this, that, yeah, the head moves, but the body doesn't. The body is stationary right in front of you. Right now, his opponent should not be going to that head. He should be going downstairs. A shooting right hand by Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's combination punching is working well here. Piercing jab. Good looking uppercut that time. Scores up top with a left. Solid jab by George Foreman. Still plenty of time to work here in round number five. Minute and a half to go. Oh. 
Well, I don't know if he's hip to the idea of becoming a counterpuncher, but I get the sense you'd agree with him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got the perfect platform, the perfect form for it. The guy's walking in right now, not moving his head much. He can time him, he can counter him. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. George Foreman is always dangerous, but right now, George Foreman is in survival. And bang, and away he goes. Oh, and he goes down after that punch. And it's been long overdue. He's been leaving an opening all night. One, two, three. Foreman's a knockout victim. He couldn't beat the count. Ladies and gentlemen, by knockout, your So he's unable to recover from that one clean shot. This bout ends by way of knockout. You know, obviously I'm not in his body, so you never know what's really going on.